in your distress when all these words shall come upon you in the latter days. Then you shall return to Yahuwah your Elohim and shall obey his voice. For Yahuwah your Elohim is a compassionate El. He does not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers which he swore to them. It's winding down. I'm finding now the truth. Shalom. Today we're going to look at five different things that's going to happen when true Israel returns to their land. Let's go to Isaiah 2.4. Isaiah 2.4. Isaiah 2 verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spirits into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So, nations aren't going to learn war anymore. Alright, let's go to the second verse. Michael 4, verse 1. Michael 4, verse 1. Michael 4, verse 1. Alright. Michael 4, verse 1. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of Yahuwah shall be established, established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, Come and let us go up to the mountain of Yahuwah, into the house of Elohim of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in the path in his paths. For the law shall go forth of Zion in the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. So, the word of the Most High is going to be coming from Jerusalem. Isaiah 11 verse 6 Isaiah 11 verse 6 Isaiah 11 verse 6 And it says The wolf also shall let, shall dwell with the lamb And the leopard shall lie down with the kid And the calf and the young lion And the fatling together And the little child shall lead them So the wolf is going to dwell with the lamb
All right, let's go to the fourth verse, Jeremiah 30, verse 10. Jeremiah 30, verse 10. Jeremiah 30, verse 10. And it says, Therefore fear thou not, O my servant Jacob, save you would. Neither be dismayed, O Israel. For lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet. And none shall make him afraid. For I am with thee, saith Yahuwah, to save thee, though I make a full end of all nations whither I have scattered thee. Yet will I not make a full end of thee, but I will correct thee in measure, and will not leave thee altogether unpunished. So the Most High is going to make a full end of all nations that have scattered Israel, and none is going to make Israel afraid. Life where I live in the South has been very challenging. Uh, we have 15 seconds to run. So whether we're in the bathroom, whether we take a shower, or we eat, uh, I found myself breastfeeding once and had to run to the shelter. It's a life where the alarm is constantly in your head, even when it's not on. One time, a rocket exploded 30 meters from where my family and I were hiding. The rocket is filled with nails and little iron balls designed to maximize casualties and damage. I try not to get scared and I tell myself that people in Gaza don't have sirens and don't have bomb shelters and they have nowhere to run, but I still get scared. My city, family and friends and of course myself have been bombarded by missiles fired by the Hamas organization. Due to this reality, we are unable to work properly, sleep properly day and night stop the shooting we will stop shooting back the explosions are really loud our safe place which is our home just became unsafe and, and scary and i just think it's really sad and scary to live here living in this situation of constant fear from the unknown can make you a bit paranoid i wish that the situation will come to an end as quickly as possible with minimum ca casualties in, on both sides all right, let's go to the fifth and final verse, Ezekiel 37, verse 21. Ezekiel 37, verse 21. And it says, And say unto them, Thus saith the Master Elohim, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side, and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, and one king shall be king to them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of all their dwelling places, wherein they have sinned. And I will cleanse them, so shall they be my people, and I will be their Elohim. So Israel isn't going to be defiling themselves anymore. And I will plead with them, therefore my people, and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted by land. His land is Jerusalem. And they scattered the Israelites all across this earth, and then they sit and, and, and they practice replacement theology and put a bunch of Ashkenazi Jews into that land right there. And they got the Americans over there, and, and the Americans, everybody duped and deceived and believing that those are the real true Israelites, when in fact they in themselves would tell you that they're not. They're Zionist Ashkenazi Jews. That's right, or Jewish. They're not, there's nothing Jew about them. They have cast lots for my people. I wonder who, who's the only ones that's ever been cast lots for. You know, people like that have a rich history of it that has been covered up in this country. And I understand that many of you Americans that don't want to hear this. It's still not going to change Bible prophecy. Uh, just the fact that I haven't been to your theologian schools to get duped and deceived. I haven't been to your theologian school to be taught what I should believe. I've exercised self-autonomy and read it for myself.